Ouroboros will be released into the atmosphere, ensuring complete global saturation. Greetings, YouTube, and welcome to the Blue Corner. Yes, that was a Resident Evil pun. Given what we're talking about today, I think it's very warranted because, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting a new ritual archetype, and there are zombies in addition to that, and they're based off of the Resident Evil franchise. Now, personally, I've never played RE. I've got four, but I haven't opened it yet. But I know a bit about the franchise, and it was pretty clear to me when I saw the Hound Horde, like, that looks like a Resident Evil creature. And then I saw the rest of the cards, like, yep, it's RE. So, puns and Jeff references to things like Master of Lock Unlocking, Jill Sandwich, What are you buying, stranger? <laughs> Thank you. And all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's going to be a thing. But I digress. We're getting a TCG exclusive ritual archetype, and to say that I lost my shit when I heard about this would be an understatement. These things look cool. They have tremendous potential. We'll see if it pans out. Hopefully they'll be on the level of BA and Cosmo. Hopefully they won't be another sub-terror deck where the, it looks pretty, but is by that I mean pretty awful. Ha! You see what I did there? I'll stop now. But these things really look really cool, and they take cues of other ritual decks, cards, and archetypes, and... It seems to be able to at least get there. So, first up, on, also as a side note, the fact that they can work with generic zombie support, such as Mizuki, Gozuki, Unizombie, and other things like that, that's relevant. So, hey, I'm going to have to go grab some old zombie cards, because I don't think I actually have any Mizukis, or if I do, they're probably commons. And actually, I should probably get Duel of Saga Ultra Bears to match my Gozuki. I digress. So, we're going to break down all the cards that have been revealed so far, and I will give you my thoughts as I go along. So, first off, Revan Dread Slayer. This is the ritual monster of the theme, the only one so far. It's a rare. It's a 6, 24, 0. So, that works with some zombie cards. Stat line's pretty okay for a level 6. I mean, it's, it's I think, the same as Lycanthrope. It's a bit smaller than, uh, what's her name? Um... Sapphira. It's smaller than Sapphira, but it's bigger than things like Herald, or at least in attack value. But for a rare, it's stat lines okay. So he can be ritual summoned with any Veg Red ritual spell. Once per battle, if this card battles an opponent's monster during damage calculation, quick effect, when you turn for once per turn during your player's turn, you can banish any zombie monster from your graveyard, and this card gains 300 attack. It doesn't say it until the end of the battle or end phase, so it's a permanent 300 buff. If this Ritual Summoned card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one Ritual Spell from your deck to your hand, and if you do, send one Vendred Monster from your deck to the graveyard. You can only use this effect of Red Vendred Slayer once per turn. So, for a rare, that's pretty damn good in what he does. He may not have an extremely powerful effect, he just gets big. However, he floats and he also dumps. And given that this archetype are all zombies... That opens the door for, again, many of the generic zombie support. There may very well be uh, more Vendred monsters that benefit from being in the graveyard. This guy can get you there. And he also replaces himself with any ritual spell. That means the future ritual spell here. Future Vendred ritual spells. Hell, you could even be cheeky. And like if you're running, say, a small Necros engine, you could fetch a Necro spell card and go from there. I wouldn't be surprised if some people throw, like, a Colossalus, a Unicorn, a Brionac, uh, and Kaleidomir in order to get your engine rolling. But I digress. Not bad. Um, yeah, we'll take this. Revendred Origin, Ritual Spell. This card can be used to ritual summon any Vendred ritual monster from your hand or your graveyard. So it's a Necro Cycle. You can also tribute monsters from your hand or field, or banish zombie monsters from your graveyard whose total levels equal or exceed that of the ritual monster you ritual summon. So it's a Necro's Mirror and Cycle, except you don't have to match the level. You can exceed it. Oh my god! That's so cool! So you can banish a 4 and a 3 to summon this guy. 
And the thing is, it also summons from the graveyard. So this thing's in your graveyard because you dumped it off of zombies, and you have a 4 and a 3 in the graveyard. You can just activate the ritual spell and just bring this guy out. So that means it's just a 1 for 1, summoning a 2400 beater. Granted, it'll be a vanilla, unless you put gins on it. Don't know if I would play gins in this. Am I getting Night Dark Draper with gins? In addition to zombies? I wonder. But I digress. Um, if a Raven Dread Slayer you control would be destroyed by battle by card effect, you can manage it. Oh, so it's also um, the Sapphira Ritual spell. Wow, that is three really good effects. And because it has the guy's name on it, it counts towards pre-prep pre of rights. Yes, it was actually confirmed by Konami's R&D. I know, lol, Konami has an R&D, that joke, ha 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 ha. But, anyway, this is a ridiculously good spell. So, you can use, it's a Necro's Mirror, that's also a Kaleidos, and that's also a Cycle, that also has a Return of the Dragon Lord's ability. Oh, and what's this? It doesn't say you can use either this. It doesn't say you can only use this once per turn. So you have multiples of these. They're all live. It also doesn't say the turn except the graveyard. So you just slap this down, and there you go. And the fact that this guy can dump him. So if this guy Slayer dies, he can dump something to the graveyard, search this. You can then play the origin and bring him back. Oh, that's so good. Oh man, this is so cool. All right, next up, the sneak peek card, Vendred Hound Horde. So level three, dark zombie, zero twenty one. If he's in your graveyard, you can discard a one Vendred card. Special summon this card, but banish him when it leaves the field. A Vendred ritual monster that was ritual, a Vendred monster ritual summon using this card on the field gains the following effect, and you can only use this effect once per turn. Once per turn, quick effect. Target one spell or trap card your controls. Banish it. So. Why I kept talking about the jinns because this is a jinn. It's a jinn that summons itself by discarding a card, but again, you can banish from the graveyard to summon this guy from the graveyard. So this is in your hand. You can just pitch him, summon this, and then you can just tribute this and banish a four zombie in the graveyard or something like that, and you can summon him. Sweet. And then he gets the ability to pick off back row during either player's turn. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, it does suck this guy's going to leave the field when he's banished, so obviously Baroque and Different Dimension is going to need to be played. I wonder if Pot of Acquisitive this wouldn't be a bad idea. But on a side note, the fact that this banishes zombies from your graveyard means you could, again, be cheeky and run Zombie World to turn everything in your graveyard into zombies, and you could just banish all the things. It's terrible. I would not recommend it. But hey, if you need to play a field spell engine at some point, because I'm sure this deck's going to get a field spell, you can always tech in Zombie World and do that. Not to mention, it turns off your opponent's tribute summons for the two Draco matchup, which is actually kind of relevant. So, hey, there's some food for thought. But anyway, I like this card. Also, because they're all darks, they're all Lure of Darkness targets. And then we get the other guys. So, let's see. Vendred Origin, Normal Trap. This is the secret rare. Normal trap. Target one face-up monster opponent controls as a level attributed, and if you do, special summon one Vendred token. Zombie dark attack, no defense, no attack, with a level of equal level of the attributed monster. While that special summon token is on the field, you not summon monsters except you cannot normal or special summon monsters against Vendred. So you could flip summon things. And since Monju triggers off of being flip summoned, that would be the cheekiest thing ever, but still. I don't know if it being a secret rare is deserving. I mean, it's a good, it's a cool card. You just tribute one of your opponent, you tri you target one of your opponent's monsters and tribute it. So it's non-destruction removal that also gives you a token to work with. Granted, you can't do much with a token other than tribute it or a Vendred monster. But still, it does out a monster, so you can set this turn one and. I'm sure we'll probably get a means of searching this card sometime down the road, but um, yeah, this is why I think this is not going to be a very expensive secret fair in time. So if you could pick this up for cheap, I would, but if anyone's trying to sell this to you for $15, I wouldn't take that. Not at all. Let's see, Remedred Slayer, where we know about him... 
Where are the other cards? Oh, am I going to have to go on the Yu-Gi-Oh! Wiki for this? I really don't want to just because when I tried going on there, it, like, killed my... It, it, like, it really hurt my speed. Alright, I'm going to suck it up and just cover it on the Wiki. One page shouldn't be too bad on my browser. But anyway, so now we have this guy here, Vendred Redivance. He is a level 4, I believe he's 18200. So his stat line is pretty good. Yep. Level 4 zombie, 18200. If this card in your position is destroyed by an opponent's card effect by battle, or card effect, and sent to your graveyard, you can special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field. A Vendred Ritual Monster that is summoned using this card in the field gains this effect. And you can only use this effect of Revenants once per turn. Once per turn, quick effect. You can target one special summon monster your opponent controls, banish it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Actually, you know what? We'll get back to that in a bit. But anyway. So, yeah, this guy got, gives you the ability... He gives your Slayer the ability to just pick off your opponent's special summon monsters. And these... Uh, uh, Renovants and Band uh, Hound Horde, they stack. So once per turn, during your first turn, you can pop a monster and pop a back run. They get banished. Granted, it is targeting removal, but still, that's pretty good. The only problem I have is that they need to be on the board in order to do this, which might be a little difficult. I mean, Hound Horde can summon himself, but Red Events can't, unless it dies in battle, but then your opponent's just going to beat it over again, so I'm not sure about that. Like, granted, you could just dump a bunch of zombies, soul charge them onto the board, and then you just summon this thing, and there you go. Well, I kind of want to try out Jins in here. They're also dark, and they can also be banished from the graveyard for ritual summons, and they give you additional effects. Jin Presider Rituals, for instance, lets you draw. Then you've got Demolisher, which gives you the ability to be non-targeted. And this Sidir gives you trap immunity, but I don't think you'd be able to get this Sidir to work with this deck, but I digress. And I've been saying that a lot. It's still a pretty good effect. And... I believe this his ability to come back is not hard once per turn. So if for some reason you've got Imperial Iron Wall out, or your opponent's got Imperial Iron Wall on you in order to stop you from using your ritual spells, this guy will never die. He'll get destroyed and he'll come back, but because he can't be banished because of Imperial Iron Wall, he'll just keep coming back. So I guess, lol, your Imperial Iron Wall is not going to be the best side option against this deck. It, it's just something that came across my mind, but still. I'm really liking how these look. I'm super excited to play them. I will play them. It's just a matter of how hard in the paint do I want to go for everything else in the deck, and how do we play this? Do we play this with sure noise? Do we just play like a zombie synchro engine? Like, if we go over more dark zombie synchro stuff, then you could also include Destiny Draw, Malicious. Malicious himself fulfills the level requirements for Slayer. So, that's a thing. And, um, what else can I really think of? I mean, also because this is Ritual Summoning, this turns on Grizzale Prison for any matchups where that could be an issue, or where it would be useful. But, um, yeah, I'm, again, I'm super happy that this is a thing. I can't wait to play it. How long it'll be before I have a deck profile of this remains to be seen. One of my friends is also building this because he just, he loves zombies. So we'll be able to bounce ideas off of each other as to how to make this thing work. Because I do believe this thing can work. I don't know if it's going to be tier, like, high tier. Like, maybe tier 2 out of this set. But I think Circuit Break could be what does it now. We won't be, get, again, I think we won't be getting a Ritual Monster and Circuit Break, but we'll probably be getting another Ritual Spell, Trap, and more Vendred Monsters to just stack even more effects on this guy or make it just easier to give him up. And we'll talk about those when we get there. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is Blue Star 899, jacking out.